Okay, so I want to talk about this range for a minute and then talk in general for a minute before we jump in. So people that have followed my videos for a while probably know one thing I really stress is how you cannot convert equity into expected value. So just because one hand has more equity than another hand doesn't mean the hand with more equity is better. So when I first started to really understand that, and I really started to understand like why some hands that don't have a lot of equity, like pseudo connectors, can actually be very good in certain situations. I probably started overemphasizing using hands that can make the nuts. As I've had to do more hand examples, I've spent a lot of time in the last two months with Flopzilla trying to get all these different ranges to sort of click for hand examples I was making. I'm starting to like high equity hands more than I originally did. So for example, here, and this by no means has to be correct. This is just what I'm guessing as of right now. I think queen 10 off is better than 6-5 suited. Now, if you were to ask me that a year ago, I probably would have said, no, call with 6-5 suited because that hand can bluff raise better. Even if it's a three-bet pot, you're still going to raise sometimes. That hand can bluff raise better. It can float and you know jam when it turns a straight draw or a flush draw. It can make some really tricky hands, all that kind of stuff. Now, after having just played around with stuff more, I'm like, you know what? I'd rather just go with the higher equity. I still might not be putting enough emphasis on high equity. So for example, wouldn't surprise me at all if king eight suited is better than eight six suited at all. Because when you think about it, like king eight suited is just going to make a pair of kings more often. It has a lot more equity. So at first, it probably seems very weird to defend king eight suited and fold eight six suited. But when you really think about it, okay, eight six suited can make some straights that king eight suited can't make. Is that really worth forfeiting? You know, a pair of kings are a lot better than a pair of sixes. Um, also, it makes the kicker a lot better when we hit a pair of eights, and it makes a better flush. I'm already kind of talking myself in, right? All right, I'm going to do it. See, I already just talked myself into using the higher equity hand. It doesn't take much. So, as you've noticed, my ranges have probably changed. I don't know what's correct. Use whatever ranges you think are best. What's much more important is that we get a general sense for what to do here. It's not to waste time trying to pinpoint exactly what the correct preflop ranges are. It can't be done, and I've wasted way too much time trying in the past, so we're going to roll with what we got right here. All right, let's jump in. Okay, so king, queen, jack, two-tone. So let's go through our questions one at a time. I don't even remember what they were. Do we think our opponent should be able to properly bet with any two cards here? Why? So let's look at this board texture. Does this look like a board where our opponent should be able to see bet with any two cards profitably? Take a moment, pause, and think if you need to. But I'm guessing most people would agree the answer is clearly no. This board just hits our range and his range way too well. He sh shouldn't be able to see bet with pocket. I mean, he probably doesn't have pocket threes in his range. But if he did have a hand like, let's say, 5-4 of diamonds, 5-4 of diamonds should not be able to see bet profitably here, I don't think. The hand is just too weak. 5-4 of diamonds needs to be check folded. So because of that, we know if our opponent bets half the pot, we need to defend at least 66.7% of our range. And when we take into account when we call our opponent gets to see a turn for free, or not for free, but very cheaply, for free relative after he's already bet, we're going to need to defend more than 66.7% of the time. So we can't have a contradiction in our thought process. Even if it gets tough, we're going to have to make sure we're defending enough here if we don't think our opponent should be able to properly see bet with a hand like 5-4 of diamonds. Let's look at the next question. How valuable is position on this board texture? All right. How valuable is position here? I think it's reasonably valuable, but not insanely valuable. There's a good amount of draw, which tends to favor position. Whenever there's draw, it tends to favor position because the next card can change the strength of each player's range significantly. But when there's two high cards, and I know there's three high cards here, but when there are two high cards, it makes it a little bit easier to check a call. So here... I guess I'm already spoiling question number three. But here, our opponent can probably check a call with hands like ace-queen pretty comfortably, ace-jack pretty comfortably. So that makes position less valuable than board textures where it's super hard to check a call. So question number three, should our opponent mostly defend by check-raising or check-calling? Call Actually, this is a really interesting question here. How risky are additional cards? So we just talked about how we could defend by check-calling with a lot of sort of medium pair type stuff. And he can have other medium pairs too. He can have some suited queens and whatnot. He can even have some suited kings that don't want to bet. But giving free cards is also pretty risky here. We're going to have a lot of draw. So if our opponent checks to us on the flop, maybe we decide to bet with a hand like, you know, 10-8 or something like that. You know, a hand that has like an open and straight draw. Or we decide to bet with a flush draw. Or we decide to bet with a hand like 
even like Jack-9 that can turn a Jack or a 10 or a 9 against an Ace-Queen. Because of that, our opponent might be a little bit more reluctant to check a call with his really strong hands. Because he might think to himself like, okay, well, if our opponent has pocket queens, it's really risky for him to check a call. So I think this is going to make our opponent want to put more emphasis on check raising his really strong hands rather than check calling them. Because it's just risky to give us free cards here. And then if we look at our range, like look at what percentage of our range has an open ended straight draw. 20%. And that's something you're really not going to know other than if you actually play around with Flopzilla and take the time to do this. So this is actually a fantastic example of something I've been stressing a lot lately, which is having access to information doesn't mean you've really absorbed it and can apply it.